potential move to Mexico. A good pair. They like each other. They're beautiful. Every year with the management of the Mexican gray wolf is a, an annual meeting is held. This past year, it was held here at the Cincinnati Zoo, which was very exciting for us. Um, it's a binational meeting, so we have colleagues from Mexico who also attend and folks from all over the U.S. 2021 and 2020 yep. to San Diego, so go ahead and break that up. The Mexican wolf is actually owned, it's federally owned, and managed by both countries. All of these folks uh, come together annually to get together, talk about issues, problems. Four hours versus next door. We do a lot of reporting. And so we get reports from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Mexico folks um, as to how well the animals are doing in the wild. But one of the really interesting things that happens at our annual meeting is how we decide to put animals together for breeding and how we might need to move animals around in between institutions. So it's this crazy complicated um, post-it note system um, where we have everybody involved and we're talking about where moves can happen and the least logistical problems for moving these animals around the country. So one of the most interesting parts of this annual meeting is when we go to put breeding pairs together and move wolves around the country. We look at the gene genetics of everybody that we're considering pairing with. If it's, a, if it's going to raise the gen genetic variability of the population, that means it's a good one. If they're too closely related and it actually brings down the genetics, we don't do that pairing. No, it's a no. It looks very chaotic, but in the end, we have a, a, a plan, which who's going to breed, who's going to move where, um, and we go from the rest of the year. We, we actually plan annually. It's a lower probability of putting pups in the wild. And uh, I'm just, I'm super glad that Cincinnati got to host it this year and we got to show off our beautiful wolves and our beautiful facility to um, 100 people around the country and in Mexico. So one of the great things about having the meeting here is we got to announce that our guys are moving to a new location here on the zoo grounds. Uh, we're renovating the old white lion habitat. So hopefully in a couple years, once the construction is done, these guys will be getting moved down there and we're excited about people getting to see them in a whole new habitat in a whole new way. So one of the very cool things about this program is, of course, these animals are part of a recovery, an active recovery program going on right now. And in the early days of the program, back in the late 90s, adult wolves were put out onto the landscape. That had its pros and cons. Um, clearly, it was something where animals who grew up in, a, in human care kind of had some issues with being a little too inclined to come up to people. But over the last, um, since 2016, we've actually switched from adult wolves here in the U.S. to puppies. So we're taking puppies that are born in human care, like say here at Cincinnati Zoo, and we're putting them into wild dens. The great thing about wild wolf moms is they can't count and they're really good moms. So we have lots of documented success with putting these puppies into a wild den. They grow up wild, they know what it's like to be a wild wolf, and so they stay out of trouble a little bit more than an adult wolf being put out on the landscape. We have animals in the wild that are fosters themselves, where we're putting fosters into their litters. So it's a really highly successful program. And one of the things we will be doing here at the Cincinnati Zoo, although we don't breed um, our wolves here um, on the zoo grounds, because there's just too many people here and too much interference with that kind of process, we do hope in the near future to build some, build some breeding pens out at our satellite facility called Mass Farm. So those wolves, we will be able to breed and participate in the foster program ourselves. So the program's been wildly successful. Um, the Mexican wolf went from being extinct, into the, extinct in the wild to just recently the states, Arizona, New Mexico, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service finished annual census reports. And they reported back that, in, that the population has grown 11% since last year and we're at a minimum of 286 wolves in the wild. So from the late 70s, from extinct to today, that's an incredible success. And in human care, we have well over 300 animals in our care as well that support this recovery initiative.